Next is the Corelli Kronos XTR. And um, in the last video, we bent it. So if we have a look underneath, we actually bent the chassis quite severely. So in this live stream, we're going to fix it. And I'm recording it live. I'm going to get a few comments from some of you guys as well over on the iPad. I've got to turn it on as well. I forgot to turn it on. Um, but for most of you guys watching, it's going to be a replay. And there's a link to this replay actually in the main video once I've made the main video. So uh, if you're watching live, the main video is not ready yet. But if you're watching it as a replay, the main video might be ready. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Right, 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 right. So we're going to have to take the chassis off. Uh, right, iPad going on. So let's set you down here. And I'll get the iPad set up so I can get the old comments a bit easier. I should have set the iPad up really beforehand, uh, but I forgot. All right, iPad, will you let me in? Yes, we are in the iPad. A lot of people say actually in the comments of the videos, it's like, what's going on with the iPad? You never use it. It's for live stream comments. Hey, we got Claire in the house. How you doing, Claire? All right, I'm going to get some live comments. So I want to know from you guys, let me know in the comments. Right, here we are. We've got the comments up. Let me know in the comments, do you think the damage on this Corelli Kronos XTR, is it acceptable or is it not acceptable? Let me know in the comments. I mean, bear in mind, we did bent the whole front, look. So that, that was before we actually even jumped it, really. We bent the whole front end, the whole front end sort of bent forward. You can see here the screw snapped off for this, this brace thing here. The steering servo posts, they're bent forward a little bit. And it's a bit hard to tell, but these two screws here, they're actually tweaked in the chassis. And this is supposed to be 7075T6, the strongest grade of aluminium. And in my opinion, it bent too easily. So what do you guys think? And then later on, we landed the chassis right on a ramp on the corner and that bent it even more. That's what really finished it off. But you know, that, that was a really bad hit. That was a severe hit. And I think that could have, that would have probably wrecked most things to be fair to it. So what do you guys reckon? Let me know in the comments if that is acceptable or not. If you saw that last video. All right, All right everything's, everything can break. That last hit was severely savage. So, you know, it's going to break. But that first one, I don't know. I mean, I'm surprised the wing actually took it. I'm surprised at that. Trailer Trash in the house. How you doing? Haven't seen you in a while, Trailer Trash. What's been going on? All right, so... I, spent, I guess we're going to have to start ripping it apart. Hopefully, it will come apart quite easily. Alright, get some glovage on, I want to stay clean. It's funny, if I wear gloves, you get people in the comments saying, oh, why do you wear gloves? And then if I've got dirty fingernails, then people go, oh, disgusting, why have you got dirty fingernails? And it's like, well, that's why I wear gloves, so I don't get dirty fingernails. <laughs> you can't win, can you? You can't win. Rich says, metal chassis is overrated. Yeah, I think so. PC says, DeWalt or Milwaukee. Oh, I like them both. It depends which for which scenario. Sometimes I prefer Dewalt, sometimes Milwaukee, but they're pretty much the same really, aren't they? All right, so I'm hoping we can whip out all these screws out the chassis, get the chassis off, straighten it, so I'm not buying another chassis. No way, these chassis are expensive. I'm not buying another one just for the thing to bend again. Creighton Sledge or Kronos, says Dave. Um, don't know yet. I've not ran this car much. I've not ran the sledge much. The Creighton I've had for ages, so I don't know yet. Is my answer to that? The sledge took an insane amount of abuse, but maybe it was just lucky. This didn't take much abuse, but maybe it was unlucky. So I'm going to have to run both of them a little bit longer, really. You know, to sort of know and give a fair opinion which one I think is best. But even even then, I'm probably not going to say really which one I think is best because you always get someone that's going to say, oh, you're, you're a hater of this brand or you're a hater of that brand or you're a fanboy of this or you're a fanboy of that. So I'll, nowadays, I'll just tend to do the video and just show what happens in the video. Whatever breaks, I'll show. Whatever doesn't break, I'll show. 
Now then you guys, the viewer, can then make up your own mind if you think it's acceptable or not. Because at the end of the day, my opinion doesn't even count really, does it? You know, it's your hard earned cash that you're gonna be spending on these cars. So, you know, it's your opinion that counts, not mine. You know, I'll do the testing, I'll show you what it can do, and then you can decide if you think it's worth you spending your money on it. It doesn't even need my opinion, it doesn't do anything. Let the video do the talking. Mechanic car says he uses gloves at the dealership. You might as well wear the gloves, I mean, why not? Jonathan says, what do you think of Edcat? I don't know, I've never had one. Right, I'm, I'm doing all these first by hand, so then we can get the Ugga Dugga in there and hopefully not strip anything off. So what I'm gonna try and do is lay all the screws out roughly where they came out and hopefully we're gonna remember where they all go. Someone goes, Nitro RC race kits, mate, when? I've got a Nitro... I have a Nitro Inferno Truggy. The MP10, the racing kit. Oh, 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 why is that just spinning in circles? So got... That's a good start. That's a good start. <laughs> John says it should be called Corelli Junkos. <laughs> Claire calls it a crap alley. She could call it a crap alley junkos. <laughs> How much does it cost for the chassis, says Andrew? I don't know, but they're normally really expensive. And I cannot justify spending all that money on a metal chassis for the damn thing just to bend again within like another bash. So I cannot justify buying another one. I mean, if you get an M2C or a Scorch one, and you're modifying it, then, you know, all good. But there's no way I'm buying another stock chassis for it to bend every time you fart next to it. <laughs> Quake's own in the house. He says, at least it's not a Skeeter. I'm thinking the Skeeter's going to be better, I'm thinking, but I don't know yet. XTM says, XTM says, why do they even make metal chassis? What are they good for? They're good for race cars. Why is it just spinning in circles? This is going to be a... I can tell this is going to be a pig to work on already. I can just tell... Oh, and it had to round off. Ah. Oh. I can see myself getting fed up with this car really quickly. <laughs> Twin says the Qualos is a poor man's Creighton. I mean, there are some severe, hardcore co rally fanboys, like, ext like extreme. I thought some of the Armour fanboys were bad. Oh my god. Co rally fanboys are on like a whole new level. <laughs> So what have you guys been up to today? Let me know in the comments what you've been up to. Been bashing, you've been working, what you've been doing? Ah, uh, Sky Miffy says, please get a starter box for your nitros. It makes life so much easier or better. Um, well, if you've only got one nitro, yes, but I've got quite a lot of nitros. And, you know, when you've got lots of nitros, it's not really going to work, is it? Because each nitro needs different set up on a starter box and you can't change the setup on a starter box every time you use it it's just going to get annoying oh, the screws i use on these are awful they round off so easy oh, they just want to round off oh, not, not impressed guys really not impressed so far RC Mania killed his RCs, oh no. Have I ever dabbled in submarines, says Jose. Um, I've got an underwater drone thing. 
so many different length screws in here that I'm not going to know what goes where when it goes when it comes to reassembly. So I think we just have to make it up as we go along. Is that a paperweight on the desk? <laughs> How good is the extraction tool? Eh, it works sometimes. I mean, I think we might have to use it here in a minute. Yeah, that doesn't want to come undone. I don't know how much patience I'm going to have with this today. It might be a short stream and we might have to do it again another day. But if it starts being annoying, this thing, then we're going to quit. Because RC is supposed to be fun. And if you're not having any fun with it, it's time to not do it. Jay says, would carbon fibre chassis work better? No idea. Carbon fibre can be brittle and break, but Martin had a carbon fibre chassis on his Creighton and he tried to break it on purpose and it wouldn't break, so. I don't know. Well, why does that just go around in circles? Right. Like that. Ah, it's probably just nutted on. Okay, right, okay, so it's nearly off. We got. I've got another screw there. Got that thing that probably goes in there somewhere. He's gonna hammer it. We are gonna hammer it. We will hammer it at some point to straighten it out. Why is this screw just spinning around in circles? Will you get Wild Max kit for your X Max? Well, I've got it ordered. But it's so long-winded in the UK sometimes that we might not get hold of it for like another God knows how many months. <laughs> Someone says it's an overpriced Banggood special. <laughs> oh, I've got an open mind to it all at the moment. You know, I'm not going to... At the moment, I'm pretty neutral. Uh, let's see where that screw goes to. I'm pretty neutral at the minute. We've got a screw going into, oh God, we've got to get this screw here out. It's rounded off. Oh yes, it's turning. Yes. Oh, someone said in the comments of one of my videos, they said, it looks like Kev's got a wig. <laughs> what do you reckon guys? Have we got a wig on? Is it natural hair or, or is it a wig? What do you reckon? <laughs> Let me know in the comments, guys. Real, real hair, or is it a wig? All right. Hopefully now it's going to lift off. We've got another screw here, which I don't know where that goes to. Right, that goes to nothing. All right. Here we go. Oh, oh we still got. Oh, I still got some stuff attached to something. What's that attached to? Oh, there's another screw. There's another screw. Silly me. Hit that wing with a hammer. <laughs> Some people said real hair. <laughs> Quake says no paid promotion, must be real hair. <laughs> a wig of natural hair, someone says. Come on. Come on, off you come. All right, there we go. We got it off. Uh, yeah, it's quite bent. Yes, we have some we have some bendage going on with that. I bet it's light. It is relatively light, yes. Uh, what else do we need to fix while we're at it on this side? Uh, mm -hmm, I don't know. Maybe just a chassis. Maybe. Hmm. Right. So we've got steering post in here that we still need to get out. If it will come out, that is. Then we're going to get a hammer out in a minute and try and straighten it all. Alright. So, that was. Let's 
get this steering post back in. That was in there. Serial, serial crasher goes gloves. No, not gloves. Not, wear, not wearing any gloves. <laughs> I don't know why some people get so excited when I wear gloves. I mean, what, what? Some people say, why do you wear gloves? I mean, like, what, what, why do you think? <laughs> why would you wear gloves? Right, so I don't want to move this because at the moment it's all nicely in position. Uh, I think the centre chassis brace isn't even broken. It's just popped out so we can hopefully pop him back in like that. Hopefully this thing is not going to be a big pain to work on. It might be though. It might be a pain in the ass to work on. All right, that in there. That drive shaft in there. All right, don't fall to bits. All right, so next, all right, let's move you over to this side. Let's get you over around here. Have a look at this chassis, see what's going on. Uh, so do we have to strip everything off to straighten it? Probably. Probably. Right, we'll get everything off, then we can straighten it easier. So we've got a screw there, a screw there, and a screw there. Do you ever buy used RC cars, says E? Eh, uh, not really. I mean, I do occasionally if it's something that I want and you can't buy it new. Well, if you can buy it new, I always buy it new because I've, I've bought secondhand stuff in the past, used stuff. And you can just end up buying a whole load of problems and then you end up just being more expensive than just buying it bloody brand new by the time you've prepared it all. I've had that happen to me a few times. One story was a helicopter. I bought a T-Rex 600 RC helicopter. Um, and then I had to buy a new engine, a new tank, a new servo, a few other bits and bobs. And by the time you, you, you had to get all that lot, and the initial price of buying it, it would have been cheaper just to buy a brand spanking new one. Right. Someone says, hello Kev from Malaysia. Hello dude. Right, let's We've got a carbon fiber brace on the middle that's supposed to help stiffen it. Didn't really work. All right, get that off of there. Get that off of there. Uh, should probably get these side plates off of there as well. So and this is really buckled. My God, that is really bent. <laughs> I've got a feeling it isn't 70-75. That is my gut feeling. Because I know when you get an M2C 7075 chassis, to bend that, you have to really hit it hard with a hammer. So we'll see in a minute with this, how easily or how difficult it is to straighten it. Someone says, how much does a 3S LiPo cost? <laughs> uh, that's, that's an impossible question to answer, dude, because there's so many different sizes it makes. It's a bit like saying, how much does a RC car cost? Or how much does a real car cost? <laughs> RC boy says it's hammer time. Yes, hammer time is coming up. I'll tell you what, I'm actually surprised how easy the chassis came off. So, so far, we're looking good. Oh my God, this is bent. Severely, severely bent. What did Craig just say? Do you reckon the sledge will go across water? Yeah, I reckon, mate, if you get yourself some paddle tyres. It should do. Definitely got enough power. Adam says send it off for analysis and get it and call them out. You know what? Someone did say that. I think me and Hardcore Dave were talking about that. And I think 
you probably will do it. I don't know how much it costs. Does anybody know how much does it cost to send away, say, like this chassis and get it tested and then tell you what it's made of? Right, so next we need some wiping material. Toilet paper will do. A little bit of toilet paper on there. Get all that grease and grime off of there. Man, this is buckled. Oh, I can see where that where it landed on that ramp. It's got a line across it. We'll get it cleaned up and I'll show you. Someone says it's better or worse than the armor chassis. Uh, no, probably about the same. Armour chassis are not really that great, are they? But look, you can see here where it landed. It landed on the metal ramp like that. So, to be fair, it would have bent a lot of things. I think an M2C chassis or a Scorch chassis would have probably survived it. Um, a plastic chassis would could well have snapped in half. So, you know, that, that was expected. That was a severely hard hit. That would have probably damaged most stuff. But when he done that little tumble wumble at the start, it bent it here, look. If you go back and watch that video where we tested it, I've done a little speed run, done a tumble wumble, nearly crashed it into Alex, and it somehow bent all across here. It's hard to see, look. See where these holes are there, where the steering posts go? It's really difficult to see, but it's definitely bent. And I've never seen a 70, 75 chassis bend round screw holes. I've seen 70, 75 chassis bend over like the whole chassis, but not really on a line. And this one, yeah. Right, let's get that straight edge back on there. We've got Callum in the house. Right, can you see that? Ooh, ooh. Oh dear. Oh dear, that is severe. <laughs> right, let's try and straighten it then. So let's see where the bend is. Yeah, that's pretty bad. So let's try and do it across diagonally, across where it actually hits. I can see that line. Better. Let's get some better gloves on. I can see myself slipping and cutting my hands off. Ah, <laughs> oh, where's my glovage gone? Right, we have glovage. If in doubt, give it a clout, says Samba. Yes. A hardcore Dave in the house. <laughs> it maybe it is 7075 because that, that's taken quite a bit of weight on there. Right, let's get it on the floor. I want to stand on it now. Let's get him on the floor. Maybe it is 7075. I'll tell you what, an armour chassis would have probably, probably bent a lot easier, to be fair. Uh, I'll have to mark it where that line is so I can see it easier. You can put a line across where it originally bent. So that's where it hit the chassis. That's where it hit the chassis on the ramp, right across that line there, look. So I think when we straighten it, we should probably put it across that same line. Right. It does feel, it feels pretty flexible to be fair. It might be 70, 75, you know. That's taken a lot to try and straight, straighten back, look. All that didn't really do much. 
Uh, maybe it is 70 75, guys. Uh, we bolt it down like that and, and swing on it again. Hmm. I think maybe it is 7075. Right. It's getting a bit better. I'd say this is this is better metal than the armor chassis, I would say. The armor chassis would have bent really easily. I remember just tapping it with a hammer and it just bent. Let's try, let's try tapping this one with a hammer. All right, where is my big hammer? Where is big hammer? Right, let's get you guys out here. I've got a vice in here. We've got a vice out here. So maybe, oh yeah, we've got a big hammer there. So let's get him in the vice. When in doubt, give it a count. Right, hold on, go get me straight edge. We get better. We are getting better. But it does need a little bit more. I'm going to say I believe them. This is 7075. I believe them. I don't think they're fibbing about being 7075. I've got a feeling I'm a fib because their one bent really easy. When I bent an arm off 7075, one, I just tapped it. I tapped it like that and it straightened it. This, I'm really having to hit it. Pretty straight. A little bit more there. This side's good. Just on this bit. Just on this piece here. So. Uh, difficult to clamp it in there. Just... Yeah. Yeah, let's try again there. Oh, that bent it too far the other way now. Oops. <laughs> oh dear. Maybe, maybe it is. Oh, maybe it is fake 75 after all. Oopsie. Oopsie. We messed that up. We've messed that up now. Hmm. Craig's a metal worker. Craig's probably cringing right now, saying, what is he doing? How are we looking? How are we looking? Right, that'll do. That'll do. What do you reckon, guys? What do you reckon? It's not perfect. Not perfect. We're not perfect. But we are pretty good. I mean, it's bent slightly the other way. So over time, it's probably going to straighten out. All right. Let's put it all back together. Do, 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 do. Craig says nothing worse than straightening things. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. I think we're pretty good now. 
it's not bad. Not bad. We're going to give it another bash soon. Give it a fair test. Right, so get all this back on there. Where's me? Where's me drink? Where's me drink? Yeah, getting stuff back to perfectly straightness is difficult. But it's only a basher. You know, if this was a race car, you would probably end up replacing the whole chassis, but it's only a basher. And bashers are bashers. You know, some people get really picky with bashers. They want them to be 100% perfect. But end of day is a basher. <laughs> as long as it works. That in there like that. Someone says, is it pronounced co-rally or co-rally? I don't know. I guess this means co-rally or co-rally or co -rally. I don't know. How's the monster truck coming along? Good. I mean, I've got to wire it up, which I'm struggling on at the minute. But I've had a little look at it today and it's starting to make a little bit more sense. What film do you like, Kev? What film do I like? You mean movies? Langoliers, that was quite a good movie. Cloverfield, that was one of my favourite movies. Do you prefer Sledge or Creighton? Don't know yet, dude. I mean, Creighton EXB, really happy with. Uh, an M2C or a, a custom RC upgrade or a scorched Creighton, extremely good. Sledge, so far, really impressed. But often on the first bash, normally not much goes wrong. It's normally after you've had it a little while and things start wearing out that everything starts coming out, what's, what it's really going to be like. Would you ever brushless convert your Savage? No. Uh, reason being, I've got an X-Max. X-Max is much better than a Savage, I would say. And it's already electric. And I've got loads of electrics. Haven't got that many nitros. So Savage, no, definitely not. I mean, you can get brushless Savages and I probably won't bother getting one. DJ says, love the videos, Kev. Hey, nice one, dude. Right, why is that screw not going in? I might get the other dug on that in a minute, then just force it in. Nah, there we go. There we go, we're going in. Is the Sledge a Creighton ripoff? says someone. Uh, it certainly looks a little bit like one, but mechanically, I would say no. Once you take the body off, it does look a little bit, well, quite different actually. It's a completely different design. And armour didn't, you know, it's not it's not armour design, these truggies, is it? I mean, it's, I don't know who first came out with them, but everyone's copying everyone. Armour definitely wasn't the first to come out of a truggy. Uh, right, where did that go? Was it that way around? Was it that way around? Do you know what? I'm going to put this on the wrong way around now and get it wrong. Oh, which way round was that? That way lines up one, two, three screws that way. It's got to be that way, isn't it? It's got to be that way. Or is it? No. Oh. I want to get this wrong now, don't I? Gonna get this wrong. Uh, damn it. Oh. Oh, guys, I, I, I missed up. 
I don't know which way around this is supposed to go on. Or is it that way around? Ah, it's that way around. That's it, we got it, we got it. Phew. Phew. Right, so then we've got the two screws there, that screw in there. Someone said I saw a ghost in my doorway. <laughs> Good job I'm not scared of ghosts then, eh? Let me know in the comments, guys. Are you scared of ghosts? Craig says, is the Raminator all running now? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I mean, I've got to take the gearbox apart because I've stripped, to get, uh, stripped something in there. Let me know in the comments, guys. Who's scared of ghosts? If I see one, hell yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not afraid. Yes, I'm scared. Only paranormal one. Don't believe in ghosts. Uh, I personally don't believe in ghosts, but only because I've never seen one. I mean, if I saw one, I'd believe in them. But I mean, even if I believed in them, I, I don't think I'd be scared in one because don't, they don't do anything, do they? I mean, what do they do? Ghosts are very dangerous, but what do they do? All they do is just go, Ooh. A little see-through white character. So you know what are they? What are they actually going to do to you? I'll shoot them. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't see what a ghost is going to do. Well, what, what, I mean, what can a ghost do to you? I mean, what can it actually do? They don't even look scary, do they? I mean, they just look like a bed sheet. I mean, what's so scary about a bed sheet? <laughs> right, uh, screwage in there. Nuttage back on there. How many RC cars do you have, says Eric? I don't know an exact number, but it's over 100. Maybe even 200, I don't know, I haven't counted. Everyone says nothing. Do you want a stampede? I've got a stampede on order, a 4x4 VXL, and it hasn't come yet, and I've ordered it for ages ago. Right, that's back together. Uh, so next, we've got these little things here. Let's get you here, let's get you on the table. Let's see what's going on. So these sit on there, I think, or is it that way? Must be that way then. And that one on there. Now looking at this car, it looks really well made actually. It does look well made. I'm gonna give it a fair test. I know I go overly hard on everything, but that's just my channel, isn't it? I mean, it, it gives you guys a look into what sort of abuse cars can take and not take. Right. Is there? Oh. Oh, found something else broken. Yep, yeah. <laughs> this piece is broken. I think David said about that bit getting broken, and yeah, it is broken. Right, okay. Uh, so, I did order some co Valley parts. Not sure if, because I think you can get that part in metal. So we've got a spare wing, we've got to get that on there in a minute. Spare arms. Spare bulkheads. More spare arms, spare knuckle, spare linky thingamajigs. No, but that bit I haven't got. But I can't really see that bit really adding much strength to the chassis because it looks so feeble and flimsy. Uh, so, well, we, we can't obviously fix that bit, can we? So we have to leave it broken. But what we can do, we can get this screw out of there. And I think I'm going to drill that out and put an M4 on there. M3, too small. Uh, let's try and get it out there first. Uh, 
Once we get that screw out of there, we'll drill that out to M4 in a minute. Look, too small that. How can a tiny little M3 screw hold all that? I think this is why the whole front end bent. This screw snapped off. And once that snaps off, it's game over. The front can just flap about where it wants. It's pronounced co rally, not co rally, says Stow Jonna. <laughs> you spelt them both the same, dude. So, how do you pronounce it then? <laughs> I love it when people say that. It's called aluminum, not aluminum. And they're both, you know, they say, you know, but it's spelt exactly the same. They spelt it. So, <laughs> all right, so that's that. X Max or Sledge says Alexander. I'm gonna go with Sledge. X Max, sorry. X Max is my all time favourite RC car. Right. Here we have a little tap and die set. And we're gonna drill it out to M4, which is this. And for that, we need a 3.3 millimetre drill bit, which I probably haven't got. So we're just going to do it 3.5. <laughs> All right, get, get the old tappy ready. M4. I don't think I've got an M... I don't think I've got a 3.3 mil drill bit. We might as well do it 3.5, which will be all right. Oh, we have got a 3.3. Look at that. 3.3 millimetre. Yes. I think I should really leave that in this set, really, so it's in there. How many dollars worth of tools do you have, says Dave? I have absolutely no idea. None at all. Yeah, we go that way. We'll get our little tappy, tappy thing. Should probably put some oil on there. Uh, we got any oil kicking around? Uh, got some bearing oil, that'll do I suppose. A little bit of lubrication on there. Need a drill press, Kev, says Fred. Oh, well, when I get a new shop, I'm gonna get a milling machine. I don't like pillar drills or a drill press because you have to hold the thing that you're drilling and then when it starts slipping, the whole thing can start spinning around and getting you. So I'm not a fan of them. I would much rather get a milling machine with a proper vice. You can clamp it in there and then you can move the X and the Y axis to get it into the perfect position. And you know, I want a milling machine anyway, so there's no point having a drill press or a pillar drill. R.T. Smith has 20k in tools, easy. Yeah, I can believe that, dude. Especially if you start buying Snap-on. <laughs> no, use clamps. Well, you can use clamps, but saying I want to drill that, I've got, to clamp, I've got to somehow clamp this to the bed of the drill, and then if it's not in exactly the right place, you've got to undo all the clamps, then move it a little bit, and then do them all up again. No, 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 no. Not doing it, not doing it, dude. If you've got a milling machine, you've got X and a Y, and you can clamp it in properly. 
and then you can just move to X and Y to get it perfect. I'm not messing around with all that pillar drill nonsense. I don't like them, never have, never will. But each of their own, you know, some people love their pillar drills. So if you love your pillar drill, then get a pillar drill, but I prefer bidding machines. All right, so now we can get a bigger M4 screw. And it should screw straight into there. Yeah, look at that, perfect. We have a beautiful thread. Nice, is nice. Is nice. Why won't you close? Why won't you close? There you are. Closed. We do still need to drill through this top plate, otherwise we're not going to get anything through there. So we need a four millimetre drill bit, because them M4 screw, you need a four millimetre drill bit as a clearance hole. So, let's get this dry shaft out of the way so we can get a straight angle of attack on it, or well, straight-ish. RC MTB says, let's go, Brandon. I agree, dude. I agree. Right. Get this jalopy back together. Oh, where did I put that? Where's that brace gone? Right, like that on there. No idea where the brace is gone, it's somewhere. Drive shaft back in. Hopefully we can get that brace back on afterwards. That on. Everything else in order. I'll tell you what though, this rear drive shaft was bent. This was bent out of the packet. Look at that. Can we give it a slight straighten or are we gonna make it worse? Yeah, I think we're gonna leave it, we'll just make it worse, won't we? Like that in, that right on there. That on there, and that. Where does that go on there? It's gonna be fiddly ass. You be fiddly ass? Yep, it's gonna be fiddly ass. Let's get these two screws in there just to hold it. Right, that in there. And then we've got to get the arse end back on. Are you going to go back on easy? 
Yes, hopefully. Have you seen the Octave VX, VRX? Um, no. Oh, wrong one. Wrong Agadaga. Wrong Agadaga. The old gyroscopic screwdriver. Game changer, someone says. Yeah, Rav keeps telling me to get one, but I prefer these, I think. Oh, all right, that's in. Let's get this centre motor contraption back in. Uh, what screws was that? These, was it? No, was it that or not? I don't even know now. Do you have T Max? No, I don't. Oh, how can that round off so easy? It's not even gone in and it's rounded off. Man, Corelli, sort it out with your screws. These screws absolutely suck. Where's that other wrench gone? Oh, these screws are awful. Right, we're not going to bother with these things. I think I should put new ones in altogether. Uh, some of them say 10.9 on there, and those ones don't feel too bad, but some of them are just plain. And the plain ones just want to round off. So these ones here, they say 10.5 on there, and those ones are pretty good. Plain ones, awful. Just use wood screws, Kev. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. Alright, and we're going to get the steering posts back on, which would probably be these two. Steering posts are never put any Loctite in underneath because I always want it to, to be able to come off easy. Alright, uh, but we do need to get this posts in the right orientation. They've got a little bit where they line, oh, it's gonna be tricky. That's gonna be tricky. Oh, how are we gonna do that? Oh. Oh dear. They've got a little cutout inside the chassis for the steering posts. And they've got to fit in there nicely, which is a nice touch, because it means that you can get them out easier, but it's harder to get them in. Oh dear. Craig says, what causes tyres to pop easily? Um, normally if you get water in there or dirt, and then you like you let one wheel spin up, and then it balloons up and pops. Now right, we've got to turn that post round. want to turn. What's going on here? What's going on guys? Oh, that's turning. I mean, this whole top plate is bent. It's not good. It's not good. So these posts are supposed to fit inside the chassis groove. And going to be difficult lining that up, I can tell already. It's not going to be easy lining that up. Right, you guys asking the same comments over and over, keep cop and you know, and you keep repeating yourself, copy and pasting. I'm not going to answer those ones. And one of you, you have already answered it, and you keep answering, just asking the same question over and over and over. Just stop. Stop with the nonsense. Do you use silicon earplugs to lock up diffs? Yes, I do. Gotta do. Oh, this is fiddly. This is fiddly. 
the steering servo, the steering post has to line up with the groove in the chassis. And, oh God. Probably the way to do it is, is put the post on first and then build the car around it. But that doesn't help when you want to take the chassis off. So that nice little idea has turned into a really annoying idea. Oh no, I don't like this idea anymore. Oh, this is going to be a problem. Right, you can't even see what I'm doing. But basically, you see this steering post? Underneath, there's a, a cutout on the chassis for that post to fit into, and it's oval, and it's got to perfectly line up with that post. And oh, it's almost impossible to do it because it's got this steering arm in the way. So I can't even tell if that's in that hole or not. So the only way to do it, probably to put the steering post on first and then the front end on, and that's going to be a mission. Oh, no, we don't like, we don't like missions. We don't like missions. An RC car should be fun to work on. If you've got to start battling with it, it takes the fun out of working on them and then that's part of the hobby sort of missing, isn't it? Oh, no, I'm not enjoying this car at the moment. No, we're not enjoying it at the moment. At the moment, we are not enjoying it. Someone says, lost the LMT time, yes. Someone says, toss it to the fire to tip. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, man. Why is that not wanting to go in the post hole? in the post hole yeah right well, I think we're in the hole we're good we're in the hole we're in the hole on that one and now we've got to get this other side in the hole right we're in the hole right we're good we're in the hole boys Ask oh, the fanboy. <laughs> yeah, fanboy have a solution, many, eh? Stupid fanboys. It's good to have a favourite toy, you know, and all that. And it's good to be passionate about your hobby. Oh, and it's rounded off again. But you get these extremist fanboys that just want to put everyone else's toys down. And we've got a, a shim here that's appeared from somewhere, no idea where. And they think they've got the best toy and everyone else's toy sucks. Oh, what? That's just stripped off in the plastic bulkhead. What? I wasn't even doing it up tightly. That's just stripped off. Ah, oh dear. Kev, where's your kitty weasel? At home, dude. <laughs> New breeder said, so, uh, anybody else still thinking about the gas powered crawler? Yeah, we got to get back onto that at some point, man. Right. No idea where this shim come from, but it's not going back in. There's no way I can put all this lot together and get a shim in there. That's going to be an impossible task. The gas that says Corelli any good. Don't know yet, dude. Fanboys say it's the best thing you can buy. I say I'm not sure yet, but so far it broke quite easily, I'd say. I 
Oh, see, Smith says he's not impressed with the car. No, I'm not too impressed yet. So far, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not really impressed. All right, and now we can get that brace back in. Are you going to drive the car when it's done? Not today. Not today, dude. All right, so that carbon fiber piece is broken on there, but we can replace that later. We've just got to wait for that to come in the mail. But I can't see that carbon fiber piece adding any strength to it. It looks so feeble. Uh, we've got to get an M4 screw in there. And of course it's impossible because it's got stuff in the way. Um, easiest way to get to it. Uh, oh no. <laughs> Uh, to, uh, maybe just take this clamp off, maybe we'll get to it. Probably the screws will round off, knowing me. Hit it with a hammer, someone says, yeah. Someone said it's co rally like a posh FTX, probably. <laughs> Where's the dirt cheap 100 mile an hour buggy, someone says. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to get back on that in the summer. Northern Lee says, love the workshop. Hey, thanks, dude. All right, so now... Get ourselves an M4 screw. And where we drilled it out and made that new tappage, look. You can get that in there. No idea if it's going to go in though because we've got this barn in the way at the top here. So we might have to take all that lot off. Not the easiest car to work on. Definitely not the easiest car to work on. It might be once you get used to it, but... Why are you battling me? Just just assemble, will you? Assemble. Why are you battling me? You're supposed to be a hobby. You're supposed to be fun. Why are you a battle? Right, we're going in. I'm not locked tight in it because the chances are I was only going to snap off again anyway. Assemble, will you? Just assemble yourself. Jesus. Alright, that's on. Ish. We're ish on. We are ish on. Uh, get this jalopy back on. Mr. Cam says, yo, Kev, your vids make my day. Oh, thank you, dude. I'm glad you like them. I try to make them entertaining. Craig Stone says, rage. No, I don't think you're going to get a rage. I'll put my tools down before there's any chance of a rage. But I'm getting hungry, though. So we might... We're going to go for another... Half hour or so, 30 minutes, and then we're going to call it. It's pretty much done now. We're just putting the screws back in, and it's pretty much done. Oh, bits are falling off. Oh, come on. 
Come on. Stop battling. Why are you a battle? <laughs> People say throw it in the bin. <laughs> can you turbocharge an RC car, someone says. I'm sure you, you could somehow if you can make all that stuff, but probably won't be easy. Man, Cody Rally used some awful screws in this thing. I just want to strip off. That we're going to leave loose for now. We've still got to get this ESC back in properly. And it really should be screwed in there as well. We might do that. So you might screw it, stick it and zip tie over it. All right, next, let's flip him back over. And hopefully we can get some more screws in. Craig says, turbo to laminate a tailor. That's already got too much power. I'll leave those sort of projects to you, Craig. <laughs> Ian in the house. He says, if you want to fix it properly, bin it. <laughs> Ian is definitely not a co Rally fan, and for good reason. He's had one. <laughs> Chassis still looks like new, someone says. Yeah, we've straightened it. Right, so you've got to get all this screwage back in. A bit short. He wants to go in there. Want to go in there? Right in there. Curtis says, if you're not subscribed, it's free. Hit it. There you go. Doesn't cost you a penny. Do it. If you want. <laughs> All right. So we need a screw in there. Oh, it's a bleeding monkey metal one. No, we're not, we're not going to put monkey metal ones in there. Monkey metal ones, we're going to get proper ones. Put it in your bin and all your problems are solved, yeah. Right, there we in. We need a couple to put in there. Not these crap ones though. Right, all right, let's get some proper screws. So if you look at these ones, look, they have no, no stamping or anything on there and they strip off really easy. But some of the other ones, they say 10.5 on there. Those ones are pretty good. These ones here are 12.9s, so they're even better. Put that in there. That in there. Battling us guys, it's battling. It wants a battle. Crap screw, crap screw, crap screw. <laughs> it wants a battle. Yes, we are in. These crap ones are not going in. Right, 
Oh, that's a bit too long. Right, a bit too long. So these ones are 14 millimeter. I think we need a 12. We have 12s. I don't know why they put some half decent screws in and some bad ones. Oh, why does that not want to go in? Why does that one not want to go in? Ah, we are, we are, we're in. We're in. I'm going to go there. Lyle says cost saving, yeah. Yeah, cost saving. Why would you save cost on something as annoying as a screw that's going to strip out? I don't understand. Yeah, so have a look at your, your co-rallies. If you've got these screws underneath it, it's got no stamping on them, then be extra careful with them. They're just going to want to round off. We do not want rounded off screwages. That doesn't want to go in there for some reason. Shorter one. one in there as well by the looks of it yep yep all right we're all in apart from the battery box but we do need to have a little look at the ESC mount so oh, what's going on in here Right, next, ESC time. Why you gotta break it, Kev? I didn't wanna break it, it just broke. Every drill and impact you have is due out. Now, I've got my wall keys as well. some holes under here they're hopefully going to line up are they going to line up yes they do line up sweet sweet so a bit of double sided sticky you break everything though well it's part of the hobby dude you know, if you play hard, bash hard, stuff's going to get broken. That's how it goes. <coughs> oh, some people complain when they break stuff, then, well, you're in the wrong hobby. You're going to break stuff for this hobby. That's just how it goes. And my intention isn't normally to break stuff on purpose, but is to bash stuff as hard as possible and find, find the limits. And then if there's weak spots, to modify it and then take it out again in future and see if the modifications has made it better. Yeah, that's my part of the hobby. And then if I do a review on the car, I like to do just a durability test so that you guys can see how durable the car is. But sometimes you get people saying, why, why? And it's like, well, for views and for fun. <laughs> why do you think? Why would you put a video onto YouTube if you didn't want views? Yeah, you know, I've always think that's funny when people say, oh, you're only doing it for views. It's like, well, duh. 
It's like, obviously I want views. If I didn't want any views, I wouldn't put it on YouTube. <laughs> what a daft thing to say, like state the obvious. <laughs> well, no, it's not only for views, it's for both. It's for views and for fun. I used to send stuff to the moon way before I had a YouTube channel. My Savage XL, which is behind me, that one there, I'll show you. That Savage, I had it way before my YouTube channel. And I also had that X Max there way before my YouTube channel. And I was giving them both absolute hell, sending them to the moon, snapping them in half, basically exactly the same as what you see on the video. And I wasn't even filming it. So when you get some people say, oh, he's only, he's only doing it for views, he doesn't even enjoy doing it. It's like, I've done it way before YouTube. <laughs> You always, you always get the jealous haters, don't they? They've got to try and put you down. Whatever you do, they've got to try and put a down on it. They've got to be negative about it. But some people just born negative and they've just got a negative life and they feel like they've got to pass their negativity on to other people to try and make themselves feel a little bit better. Uh, pathetic, really. But, you know, you just got to think. Think to yourself, you've got to feel lucky. You know, that we're not like that. You know, they're like that. They're all miserable and all that and... They're all miserable and hating life. They try and project it onto us. You've got to feel sorry for them, really. You know, for us positive people, we're lucky. We've got a positive life. We always look at the positives and everything. So, we, you know, we, we're born lucky that we can have positive outlooks. For all these negative people, you, you have to feel sorry for them, didn't you, really? They might just get out of bed and just hate life and everything's negative. No, that's not long enough. Screw doesn't even want to go in. No, let's go up a size. Jonathan's RC garage says they need salt. <laughs> Why does that not want to go in? What, what's going on with that? It's lined up. But it doesn't want to go in. What's going on with that? Right, Uncle Dagger, come here. Right, it's got in. <laughs> Michael says, X-Max still king. Depends on your opinion. In my opinion, yes, king. But some other, some other people don't agree, and that's fine. That's a good thing with this hobby. We can, we can all like different things, and we can all, all have things that we prefer over different stuff. Do you ever take the sway bar off of it? No, I didn't take it off. I normally, if a car comes with a sway bar, I'll leave it on. If it doesn't, I'll leave it off. All right, so we've got that screwed down now. Uh, zip tie over the top as well for added security. Uh, zip ties, zip ties. All right, hold on, back in a sec. Got to get a zip tie. Ah, uh, we have zip tieage. Last time, all we relied on was that double-sided tape. Now we've got screws, double-sided tape, and zip tie. This ESC is not coming off again. Can't do. <laughs> what do you think of the grasshopper? I, I was never a grasshopper fan when I was a kid. 
So Stempy had one, and my buddy had one, but it was never. I was always a Manta Ray fan. Alright, so we could get that back in, but. And we need a new strap. We've broken this strap off. Someone goes, I think you need Traxxas sponsored underwear. Why do certain people think I'm sponsored by Traxxas? Traxxas has never paid me a penny. Just because the X-Max happens to be my favorite RC car doesn't mean that Traxxas sponsor me. Uh, strappage. Strappage. Uh, how's it going to go in there? Is that strap pitch going to be long enough? Yeah, I put it in the wrong way around though. <laughs> what size is your worktop? I uh, don't know. I don't know. It's probably about two foot wide and six foot long, maybe. I'll measure it in a sec. Hold on, let me get this strap in there. Right, so that in there, that in there. Is that going to work? Yep, that's going to work. Right, we've got battery strap in. That, I think we're going to leave it loose for now because we need to get that new brace to put in there. And yeah, look, I'll show you, I'll turn you around. If you look in there, look, we've got that carbon fiber brace and it broke. And David said, I bet you the center carbon fiber brace is broken. And I thought it was on about this flat one there, but it wasn't, it was on about that one. Uh, so I have actually ordered a metal one and it hasn't come yet. So I think for now, we're going to leave it at that. Is something supposed to be on there? Is something going to be on there? Yeah, we'll leave it at that for now. Wait for that, that little bit of metal to come. And then we're back to happy bashing. Oh, and we've got to change that. We can do that quickly now. And then I'm going to go and get some food. So I'm getting hungry. Getting hungry, boys and girls. Uh, all right. It clears the same as the V1. <laughs> right, off with this. I'm surprised this wing mount held up. When we dug it into that floor, we dug it in hard and it took the abuse. Oh, no holes. Hmm. Why is there no holes? We have to make the holes. <laughs> no big deal, we have a reamer. Right, put that there. Please, we've got this body reamer, look, it's like a cone thing. You just ram it in and just keep turning it. And the more you ram it, the bigger the hole gets. Hopefully, I didn't make the hole too big. Perfect, look at that. Absolutely spot on, perfect. How is the weather, says Steve. Ah, oh, lovely dude. I'm actually sunburnt. Right, that's on there perfectly. Get this thing back on there. Right, 
And that is it. We're pretty much back to action. And to be fair, the only part I had to buy was a wing. And that was it. Other than this little chassis brace there that I'm going to have to replace. So... Pretty impressed with the chassis actually. It took a lot to straighten it. So maybe the chassis on this is going to be all right. We're going to see. Right. Anyway, guys, we are going to call it a day now. I'll get a couple of questions while I just finish a bit of tea. No, where, can, where can you stay? Will you stay there? Yeah. What is everybody saying? When are you going to blow up the engine? Oh, you want about the jet engine soon? Soon we're going to get on that. We go get Claire and Stempy to come over, and then we can destroy it with a rip up motor. Will you keep racing RC cars, Kev? Says Matthew. Ah, every now and then. Not, not. I'm not going to get into it. Every now and then. What time is it there? It is nine o'clock. It would have been eight o'clock, but the clocks have changed. We now got summer time. Phil says hello from LA. Hello, dude. What do you think about the Armour Quayton 6S? Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, EXB is all right, but you've got to change the chassis on it, really. EXB chassis, they still bend almost the same as the other ones. So. Has Raz hitting 198 got you nervous? No. It's only a bit of fun, isn't it? You know, I want to get the world record. Uh, Raz has got a big advantage because he's got a big runway that he lives next to. I've got nothing like that near here, so I can't really compete. It's impossible. I, you know, until I find a local area where I can run it, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go for it, but it's unreasonable to think that I'm going to get the world record and only get to run it once or twice a year, really. XO1 to the moon. Yes, Cody, XO1 will go to the moon. Lyle says more heli plane bids. Yes, we we got some we got a plane bid coming up. <laughs> Have you had fun building that monster truck? Ah, oh, been loving it, dude. It's been my dream all my life to build one, so I've been enjoying it. I've not been rushing it. I've been taking my time with it. Uh, I've really been enjoying it. So never stock RC says MGM Primal. No, I was tempted, but the MGM speed controllers, they're very high tech, very well made, but there's no case on them. So I think for bashing, you're going to end up ripping them apart. You're going to kill them. So no, no. If they made one with a, like a basher case around it, I'd be tempted. But the ESC as it is, nah, I think if you get any water on it, it's going to be dead. If you bash on it too hard, it's probably going to be dead. So, nah, I'm probably going to put a flyer in there, I think. I see rival MT in the background. When will there be a video on that? Ah, there will be at some point. I've got to unbox it. And then there's going to be a video at some point. Joe says 800 amp flyer for the Raminator. Yeah, I think we'll go with something like that, Joe. They do like a marine one that's water cooled. So I think that'll go in there perfectly. I think the stock motor has got more than enough power. I mean, it really is. Uh, on the stock gearing, it done, I think, 30 mile an hour. For, for an RC monster truck, more than enough. But, you know, a little bit of punch would be good. Any luck on house search? Ah, uh, still looking. Nothing perfect's really come up. I found a really nice one yesterday. But it didn't have that much land. It only had three, three and a half acres. We want a bit more than that. You know, I want sort of 10 plus acres, really. You know, 10 would be enough. Uh, less, but I don't really want to go for much less. Benjamin says the MGM is not waterproof. Well, the whole circuit board is exposed on it. Is that the sledge behind you? Yes, that is the sledge. I'm waiting for some parts for that. Do you still support your charity? Yes, link down below. Uh. See another unit to rent for a bigger workshop or happy where you are. No, I need a bigger shop, but I want to buy, I want to find a house 
It's got land, unit, you know, workshop, uh, land, all, all on the same plot. So, you know. Do you have sugar in your tea? Nope, I don't eat any sugar. Have you considered moving to US? I want to get myself sorted there first. I want to get myself a nice place here. Nice bit of land, nice house, all that stuff, nice shop. And then save up again. And then I want to get a place in America. And then my dream is, is, you know, maybe see if I can get into Florida. I mean, I know I could get in. If I set a business up over there, I'll get in. Well, maybe get in with all their bloody vaccine requirements. Maybe not. We'll see. But um, my, my plan is, is to have a house over there and a house over here and then sort of go between both. So, you know, Florida is really nice in the winter. So I'm sort of thinking maybe Florida. Also, not really any tyrants in Florida. You know, you've got old DeSantis over there. That, you know, he respects people's freedoms and people's liberties. While some of the other tyrants don't. So, yeah, I think I'll choose Florida. Uh, I know it gets really humid there in the, in the summer. So I'll probably come back to the UK in the summer and go over there in the winter. Perfect. That's my dream anyway, you know. One day, but I want to get myself sorted here in the UK first. Florida is warmer in the winter than it is in the UK in the summer. Lovely. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think I could handle Florida heat and humidity. Vegas heat's quite nice. You know, not maybe not in the heat in the summer, but in Vegas it's... Um, it's dry, so it feels quite nice. I'm not a fan of humidity. Is your house where your workshop is? No, not exactly where my workshop is. It's just around the corner. So I'm about 30 seconds away from my workshop. Jacksonville, Florida here. Nice. What are you doing? I'm waffling at the moment, guys. I'm waffling to you lot. I've just been fixing my Corelli Kronos. But other than that, I've just been waffling with you guys. You should overpower X Max. Uh, I've got a video coming up with um, overpowering X Max. What do you think about drag RC cars? Ah, uh, not really my thing. I mean, I've I've got a Traxxas one. I mean, it was a bit of fun, but I, I can't see myself getting into it. Rent is cheap in Vegas. You'd love it out here. Yeah, I mean, I've been to Vegas a few times. I do like it over there. What do you think about F1? Oh, I'm not really a fan, really, to be honest. Not an F1 fan. Pinion recommendations for Skeetar, says the RC action. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to put a big opinion on, because it is definitely way under geared. So I've just ordered some new arms for it. We're going to get him fixed up. We're going to put a big opinion on there. And we're going to go in for round number two. Yeah, you guys in Florida have got a good governor. What about the Raminator? I love the Raminator. What are you building after the monster truck? A top, a, a top fuel dragster. Hey, you got Raz in the house. Oh, I've got this plan to build like a crazy monster truck. I mean, I know I said I'm building the world's best monster truck, the one I'm building now. And, you know, I've bought all the best parts, but it's pretty much the same as everybody else's monster truck, really. It's just a bit wider. So, you know, you, you, can't, you can't build it much better, really. You know, maybe you could put a Hemi engine in it or something, get a little bit more power. But I'm thinking, what about building a monster truck to, like, show, show spec, all chromed out, concourse paint job, and then put a top fuel in engine into it. <laughs> what do you reckon to that? When are you going to do W W L Toys video? I don't know. What's your favourite cheap basher? Probably one of the Armour Three S cars. Probably a lot of people say it should be that rival. So. 
I, I might change my mind soon. Did you kill Armour Fanboy? <laughs> no, he's still kicking around, but he's sort of gone away a bit at the moment, the Armour Fanboy. At the moment, there's a Co Valley Fanboys everywhere, so. Taylor says, go for a diesel monster truck. Oh, no, they haven't got the response, really. When are you doing Monster Truck Show? I'm doing the one at Santa Pod on August the 21st, I think it is, if we get it running. I mean, it's so close to getting it running now, but obviously I'm completely new to all this. I've never built a Monster Truck. I might not be able to get it to work at all. Or maybe we test it and blow a transmission and I can't get a spare one in time. I mean, if the truck works, I'll, I'll, I'm going to be at the show. If I'm alive and healthy and the truck works, I'll be at the show. <laughs> What with the extended X Max? Ah, oh, we took it apart and put um, armors on the end of it. Claire says we will get it running. I bloody hope we'll get it running. <laughs> I had a little look at the wiring earlier, Claire, and I found some other wiring in the box, and it's starting to make a little bit more sense of, of where the, where it all goes now. So I'm going to do a bit more wiring on there. Uh, I've got to get a couple of batteries, wire the batteries in, and hopefully Tony can have another little look and check over it all, make sure I've done it right, and then we can get it running. Get the bad boy going. We still need to get the hydraulic hoses, so I'm going to ring the dude tomorrow uh, who does the hoses and see where he's at with that. What's with toilet paper on the workbench? Good for wiping down stuff, dude. Good for blowing your nose. It's good for wiping grease off. You know, what, what, what do you think it was for? <laughs> Claire says she can't wait to hear it run. I can't wait to hear it run. Cannot wait. Let's hear your American accent. I did not have an affair with that woman. <laughs> what do you think of the Outcast 4S? I love it. There you go. There was my American accent. Will you let Stempy drive your monster truck? <laughs> he can drive it slowly, but he's not hes not giving it hell. We'll probably limit the RPM for him to like 3,000 or something. Do you know how to smoke rubber tyres on a two-wheel drive car? You just let them spin. Let them spin. If you've got enough power, eventually they should smoke. How many X-Maxes do you have? I have four, I think. One, two, three, four. Yeah, got four. And one over there is 10 piece. So we've got five in here at the minute. I think one, two, three, four, yeah, five. Five X-Maxes in there, one of them stamps. When is Monster Truck going to be done? Soon, Aaron, soon. I can't put a time on it or a date on it, but soon. Are you hungry? Yes, I am hungry. I'm going to go get food in a minute. We're going to call it a day. Are you going to put NOS on the monster truck? No, no NOS. Would you recommend Outcast 4S or Granite 3S? I like the Outcast, but it depends what you like the look of, and you can't really get the Outcast at the moment, so. Driving a monster truck looks painful. Are you good with that? I've done banger racing and apparently driving monster trucks is worse, so I don't know, I guess I'll have to be cool with it, won't I? When something's a dream, when something's your lifelong dream, then you have to put up with it, don't you, I guess? <laughs> Armour felony or infraction? I prefer the infraction, Joe. Oh, yes, I says, hope you achieve your, achieve your dreams. Thanks, dude. I hope all of you guys achieve all your dreams too. If any of you guys have got any crazy dreams going on, then most of them are perfectly achievable. If someone else has done it, then the chances are that you can probably do it as well if you put your mind to it, if you persist long enough. You know, obviously, with something realistic, you know. I mean, well, I don't know, you might... It might be your ambition to be like the world's fastest runner, for example, but if you're 
Bozzy physically isn't up to it, then it's not going to happen. So, you know, you've got to be a little bit realistic sometimes. But, you know, any, any sort of monetary goals, there's so many ways out there that you can make money that, that whatever your goal is, you should be able to pull it off, find a way of doing it. How many RC cars does Stamp have? It's Stamp. <laughs> Stamp's got X-Max. I don't know how many he's got. He's got X-Max, Big Rock. He's got an old lossy two-wheel drive buggy that we might get going for him and take it racing. Uh, he's got a Bush Devil, Grasshopper, a Mardave Marauder, uh, a Schumacher Nitro 10 stadium truck. Uh, he's got a lunchbox. I think that's it. Have you used high-tech servos? Um, don't know. I can't remember using one. I probably have at some point. Eraser says same problems with the screws on the Corallo on the Corallo Jumbo. Yeah, I've heard people complain about armor screws, but I've gotten on all right with them. Do you prefer Creighton or Sledge? Too early to say, dude. Too early, I don't know yet. I mean, my gut feeling is Sledge, I think, but I don't know yet. We're going to have to give it time. And over, I don't know, hopefully over the next few weeks, we'll know better. Will the Mardave Cobra handle brush the system? I have no idea. Right, anyway, guys, we're going to call it a day. Uh, I'm going to go and get some food. Uh, RC Smith, no. Eco Boost servos are not waterproof. Uh, and we're going to, yeah, we're going to call it a day. All right, guys, thanks for stepping by. And I will see you soon in another, in another video. If you look over on the main channel, I just put a video out a few hours ago of the Skeeter. And it broke really quickly. So um, head over there, check out that video. And the day before that, uh, yesterday, I put out a video of this, a race car. So I built a professional racing car so associated, uh, oh, I don't even know what it's called, so associated something, this thing here, a B6.3, RC10B6.3 team kit. So I built that and raced it, and I qualified first, actually, and then I came last in the A final. Hi right, guys, great chatting with you, and I will see you soon in another video. <laughs> Take it easy, bye. Bye, 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 bye. Come on.